All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Don't mind the mess. Uh, I've been busy putting up some new shelves, so things have been kind of crazy around here. And uh, my once immaculate and beautiful room is a mess, except for my wife's desk, which is nice, neat, and clean, of course. Uh, but anyway, I don't know if you remember, but I was talking to you about a new system I was gonna buy, and it's right there, but I'm replacing my old AMD Phenom 2 X6 1055T, which is hiding back here in the corner. I'm gonna get that moved out and I'm gonna put a set of shelves back here. So quite a bit to do there. Um, and I had a system that I bought, it was a Lenovo. And in my previous video, the Lenovo was seriously lacking. So I went back to Best Buy and I bought this. So with this particular system, this one's a Dell AMD Ryzen 7, very similar to the Lenovo, but I was able to find the hardware manual online. I actually was for the Lenovo as well, but it did not show in detail the motherboard. This particular system did. So this is more of a kind of like a gamer system. Uh, instead of an RX 560, it has an RX 580, and I believe it's a 4 gigabyte card, which is fine with me because I'm not really a gamer. And uh, it's got 16 gigs of RAM, a 1 terabyte hard drive, kind of the same thing as the Lenovo, but it'll allow me to do all of the additions that I need. I have a 4 terabyte hard drive, well, it's supposed to, let me put it to you that way and I have two SSDs that I want to put in from my older 1055T AMD over in the corner. So I benchmarked the 1055T. I did, because I didn't have a video card in there, I did the uh, Geekbench 4 and I did Crystal Disk. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this baby out, fire it up with the drive in there, um, actually, yeah, I'm going to fire it up with the current drive in there. No, you know what? I'm not going to bother because I'm basically not going to use it. Um, I want to put my four terabyte in and get my two SSDs in. So we're going to fire it up that way. It's going to be a major challenge because both Linux and Windows are expecting a standard BIOS. And of course, this thing will have a UEFI BIOS. So I'm probably going to have to do some reinstalling. But... I did back up my home directories for both Linux and Windows to uh, the four terabyte drive. So if I have to blow it away, no problem, no fuss, no muss. And quite frankly, I wouldn't lose anything if I had to blow it away anyway, because my critical documents are in the cloud. So no worries. So I'm going to mount the camera on a tripod. We're going to get started on this baby. All right. So here's the angle. So while I'm unboxing this, I just wanted to... Uh, in advance, let users know that you don't have to bother with the you could have got a much better system if you'd built your own blah 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 kind of comments. I'm well aware of that. I've built computers for decades, probably since before most of you were even alive. And, you know, there is a time when I do want to build my own computer and I have a lot of fun with it. But my main purpose here is to get a system that's halfway decent for editing. So... I just didn't feel like building my own computer, so that's why I purchased one. And it works for me, and that's that's the main thing that's important. I'm just sharing uh, the... ...720-18. If you want any kind of upgrade, and that includes installing a single hard drive then I recommend not getting it because you can't. Well, it comes with a keyboard, a pretty basic keyboard, I'm sure. I already have a wireless keyboard I use. And we get a basic Dell laser mouse. Never know when you might need a mouse. They come in handy. Handy dandy power cord. We'll be needing that. Lots of stuff for so small of a box. Here's some uh, paperwork. 
You know, I remember the good old days when you would get a huge manual. Now you get these little things. Um, you know, kind of pointing out what everything is and warranty and safety. So this is this is the extent of it. That's it. How things have changed. All right, let's see if we can get this baby out. Considerably larger and heavier than the other one, but that's all right. So let's check out the front. So this thing is much larger and much heavier than the previous unit, uh, which was that Lenovo 720. So I've got two uh, high-speed USB. I actually have a USB-C here, and I do have a cable for that if I want to use it with a hard drive. Headphone jack, which is really cool. SD card reader, that's going to come in handy. It looks like it's got a standard uh, CD-ROM DVD drive. I'm not sure what this is, more than likely for expansion. I guess we can take this off and find out. Yeah, it looks like uh, just an expansion base, so I could put a full-size DVD or Blu-ray in there if I wanted to. In the future, I might put a Blu-ray in there or maybe one of the newer, not the Blu-ray. I already forgot what they're called. Yep. Signs of age. Uh, there's tons of plastic on here. I don't think I'm going to bother removing it until I know I'm keeping it. On the back panel, <clears throat> we have one, two, three, four USB 3.0. Beautiful. Standard... PS2 keyboard and mouse, uh, various audio inputs and outputs, as well as a microphone, which all of that will come in really handy for me. Uh, standard power supply down here. We're going to find out how much the wattage is. Uh, it's probably going to be good enough. Now, do I need to remove screws to get the case off? I'm thinking, yes, I'm going to have to remove at least two, which is a bummer. I was hoping I could avoid that. But, got a handy screwdriver right here. It looks like it clicks in, too. So this thing's got the LEDs and all those goodies. So that'll be pretty neat. Okay, I'm not, I'm lying. I, I really don't care about the LEDs at all. It's not even going to be in a place where you're going to see them anyway. So two screws. Gets the panel off. Let's see if I can move this so everybody can see it. So this is definitely a much more complete computer. Way more complete than the previous one. Uh, let's see what we have here. Let me try to get an angle for you guys. So I've got an additional memory slot. I can put another 16 gigabytes in. I have at least, oh no, I have two M.2 PCIe NVMe slots that I can add into. This thing has Bluetooth and wireless, which is awesome. Uh, it has... Two additional SATA connectors. So I've got two more drives. No, it's got three more because I really do have three drives in here. And I'm thinking, looking down here now, uh, let's see, what could I do? Well, I've got another drive bay here that I can add my four terabytes. So I could leave the one terabyte in. I'm not seeing a ready mountable space for my two drives, my two SSDs, so I'm not 100% sure yet where I'm going to throw those, but I'm thinking, I mean, what I did with my other computers, I just taped them in place. It was really uh, high tech, you know what I mean? Um, it looks like, I don't know if it's possible, I might be able to put something in here. Plenty of, oh yeah, there's a slot right there for at least one. So I've got space for at least one. That's cool. And probably could find spot for another. I have another 
slot down here if I want to do another video card and do SLI. I have another slot here where I could put my other USB 3.0 card in. I figure I might as well make use of it. I mean, I have the space. Although, I don't know. I would be afraid that I'm going to block the airflow, so I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, way more expandable than my other computer. So I'm going to pull the SSDs and the four terabyte drive from the other system and I'm going to start on that. So give me a second. I'll be right back. So now I have no clue how difficult it's going to be to get all this stuff set up. So I'll probably speed up this section and won't talk too awful much, but um, uh, hopefully it won't take too long. So here we go. Okay, I don't think I had my mic on earlier, uh, so I've got the system all set up and my monitor wasn't working, so that took a while to ferret out. Finally got that figured out and I powered it up and the power supply has a blinking amber light. One, two, three, four, blinking four times. No surprise there really. So something's up. I don't know if it's the video card or what's going on here. I'm definitely plugged into my monitor, so it should be working. So give me a couple of minutes here. All right, well, after pushing in the video card and pushing in the memory and um, getting it to come up, I've got pretty blue lights on now. I had to unplug and plug in the video to get the video working. Uh, checking to see if my Wi-Fi keyboard and mouse are working and I'm gonna go with no on that so oh nope it did take the escape key so I guess it is working looks like hitting escape basically powered it down so I'm gonna try one more time here 
it's it want because it can't detect the hard drive, the Dell hard drive. It wants to go through and check all the memory in the whole system, and that's not very exciting. Slowly booting up. It's saying checking media up in the corner there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. It's a little sharper. And then it automatically goes into uh, memory check, hardware diagnostics, and so on. Okay, so let's do F2 for BIOS setup. Default boot device missing or boot failed. Insert recover media and hit any key. Then select boot manager to choose a new boot device. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, I've made several BIOS setting changes. Once I disabled Secure Boot, uh, I was able to get into Legacy Boot, and I put this dash here next to hard drive. I'm not sure if that means to keep it or not. If I press Enter, Enter, select submenu. Well, there's no submenu. F5, F6, change values. Okay, well... Now it's at the top. Uh, but anyway, I disabled Secure Boot and enabled legacy option ROMs and put legacy as my boot list option. And yet here is another thing. Attempt legacy boot. Man. Ugh. I'm going to go up here to fast boot. I don't know. I guess I'll change it to auto, but I sure hope that doesn't change anything else. All right, so I'm going to save the changes, and let's see what happens. And after about a minute, the screen finally comes on again. Oh, it's booting Windows. Crap. Well, at least it's booting something, right? Uh, I guess I'll have to change the boot order of my SSDs because it's trying to boot into Windows, and I'm willing to bet... It'll be able to. Yeah. At least I'm getting one system going here. But I really wanted to boot into uh, Linux. So I'm going to have to make some changes here. But I think I will let it log in because I'm thinking I'll want to continue discovering hardware and we'll let it do that. So at least I can get that done. Well, that's good news. I got Linux to, uh, excuse me, Windows to boot up. And um, my Linux drive has a boot menu option for Windows on it. So closing in now. Okay, well, for whatever reason, and I have no idea why, it's now booting to the Linux drive. Um, here's why I think it's really strange, because all I basically did was press the escape key a bunch of times. I'll be darned. Shock of all shocks. Now this is Fedora 27 on this system. I really didn't think that was going to happen. Um, but I'm willing to bet I've got no interwebs. And if the internet doesn't work on that card, I really don't care because, well, nope, it's showing, it's working. Wow. Connect. I can't believe it. You're telling me that I mean, at least the base video is working. I don't know if I have 3D working, but the network card works, and it actually booted. Now all I have to do is figure out why it boots to Windows sometimes and Linux other times. But I think I can button this thing back up and get it in its permanent location. It's looking good. I'm pretty excited. All right, I'll be right back. All right, Fast Gadgeters, I'm back. Uh, the system is all set up. I'll show you a little video of how I got it set up. Constantly working on the studio, trying to improve things, make things look better, work better. And, whoops, cell phone going off. Anyway, uh, the Dell system, I'm, I'm 
totally geeked. I put in my two SATA drives and I was able to turn on the legacy BIOS support. It took a little time, but I was able to get it set up with my drive, so I'm pretty excited. Now, here I've got the ratings for my previous system, the Phenom 2 X6. So I had a single core of 2,184 and a multi-core of 7,837. Lenovo 720-18 that I took back did get a single core of 3,886 and a multi-core of 17,854. Now, I went ahead and downloaded Geekbench for in Linux, and that's something I've never done. Well, it is actually so ridiculously easy. I'll probably always do, well, I know I will, I'll always do a Linux benchmark as well. So I have not benchmarked this system yet in Windows, which I need to do. But score came out single core 4057, multi core 17,800. Now, when I'm doing rendering, I know that, uh, you know, the multi core will come in really handy. But I am a little surprised that single core, I mean, Yes, it's changed, but it's not even 200% faster, technically speaking. On a, We're just looking at a, a rough estimation here, and we're using a synthetic tool, so, you know, take it for what it's worth. But uh, I guess I expected more from a single core. Now, the last video I rendered took 44 minutes, and since I didn't have to reinstall Windows and I didn't have to reinstall Linux, nice. I'm going to go ahead and rerun that right now, and then I'll come back and let you know what the completion time was. So be right back. Okay, well, the rendering is completed. This time it took 26 minutes, 22 seconds, so I shaved off a good 18 minutes on the render time, and that's excellent. So fairly happy with that however uh, I did notice checking my processing here um, I've got 16 threads and I was only seeing a CPU utilization time of like anywhere from 30% to 70% so it was varying greatly and I wasn't overly impressed so I was expecting it to be even faster and I think I'm gonna have to look at and possibly work on maybe tweaking it a little bit and see what I can get out of it but uh, definitely way faster. You can see even right now I'm only using a 10% processor load. I'm using uh, OBS right now and normally when I would use OBS on my other system I would look at a processor load of anywhere from 30 to 60 to 70 percent. So now I'm thinking in Linux I'll be able to have virtual machines running, have OBS running, I've got the webcam running in 1080p right now, uh, it really wasn't doing all that great so I'd have to do put my Logitech 920 C920 in 720p just to make sure that I didn't get any dropped frames or any problems like that so definitely definitely a more powerful system and I'm pretty geeked so I'm going to get to work. I've got a couple of different videos to edit it for you and get them uploaded. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets.